we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Modeler Mondays today. For those who've never joined us before, this is the ninth episode in the live stream series Modeler Mondays. Every other Monday, unless scheduled otherwise, at 1 p.m. EST. Modeler Mondays provides tips, tricks, tutorials, and an insight into professionals' unique workflows when creating in both VR and on desktop in Adobe uh, Adobe Substance 3D Modeler. So uh, thank you for everyone for joining us today. I see that the chat is popping. We see um, El Amino, Patty P, Frosty the Beer Man, which is an incredible incredible name. Uh, also, hello to TD, our MTG speaker man, everybody who's decided to join us today. Very cool to see you in. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. We will pin it. We will get to them. And may I introduce our co-host today um, and also our special guest. We have um, Anton Mikolov. Anton, do you want to say hi? Hello. Do you want to introduce <laughs> yourself? <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm uh, the um lead ui architect on modeler so i write the ui code and i also chat with artists like tyus and others a lot to try to figure out what they need and how we can get it into the app cool yeah and also uh for those who know anton in the discord community anton is known as discord daddy um he is in there uh he answers a lot of questions around Modeler, so feel free to reach out to him at any point in time. But for any other queries, you are more than welcome to reach out to me as well. Um, as you can see, it's also the Halloween stream, so I am dressed up. I was told that Anton would also dress up, so he kind of did me dirty, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we respect him. Uh, and then, oh, also, so let's actually get into our special guest today. Um, we also have, okay, I'm going to say your name because I you know we practiced before. It's Tyus Hay Thompson. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> for English talkers, so... Incredible. Yeah, I, Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so, my name is Tyson Jakobsen, and um, I'm a concept sculptor and a concept artist uh, working in entertainment, uh, primarily in, in video games and animation. Um, and um, prior to that, I had a 12-year career in in um, 2D graphic design and, and branding work, um, and I made that transition actually because of um, the software prior to Modeler, um, Adobe uh, Medium. So, cool. yeah. Yeah, and I think you also had some images to show of like some previous work that you've done too, right, Tess? Yeah, so um, a lot of uh, what I'm able to show here is, is primarily my personal work since uh, I only transitioned into um, concept art for entertainment um, the last four, five or six years ago. So most of my um, work stuff is, uh, is under non-disclosure agreements and so on. But I have... Um, a few personal works I'd like to quickly browse through, and also a bit of my personal work that I've been cleared to show off, and, and, and just touch upon how that, how that my um, heavy focus on VR apps like Medium and Modeler applies to the work I do. Mm -hmm. So the first um, two examples here are personal work where I've, I just wanted to show um, like the width of work because that's important to me when when talking about the medium and model because model, that's really what model gives me the freedom to be style agnostic if you will and 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 by focusing on on form first it gives me flexibility to um, apply myself to a lot of different styles and different projects so the guy on the left is, is um, a project made uh, purely for illustrative purposes, and the bust on the right is um, created for uh, supportless 3D printing. And right, yeah, like I said, I'll just quickly browse through these things so we can get into the fun stuff. But um, this is another example of some of my um, 3D print work, and everything you see here is is um, done in Modeler. Um, oh wow! except for the rendering, of course. But mm -hmm. what I really try to do is solve as I, I want to treat Modeler as my do everything as possible. Um, because of the very practical way of interacting with the software. So everything that here is done directly in Modeler. And I only use 
as much as I as much as possible, I only use other software of prep work or post rendering work, stuff like that. Right. Um, this is another example of of um, uh, 3D sculpture in VR for illustrative purposes, and where all the forms you see, all the colors were were done in VR and, and just applied with some rendering and a bit of um, touch of filtering on top. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Like it's beautiful illustratively too. Hey, like I always anticipate that when I see sculptures, they should just look like sculptures. But then when I see something like this, it really opens my mind up. Yeah, and it, I think it really shows. I mean, this may not apply to one person's specific goals, but it's just trying to use it, see how you can use it for a lot of different purposes. Um, and in this particular case, I was uh, referencing an illustrator called Ico Sid, which I'm a huge fan of, um, and trying to sort of see how would how would I approach something where I was trying to get this sort of a look. Um, and this one here is another example of that, where um, um, inspired by the recent um, beta uh, of the dot type game from Fat Shark, which um, had such a beautiful realization of the world. I was I was just so inspired after trying that and seeing their the way they built the world and just see okay how can how far how close could, could I get to something like that and what would the workflow look like if I tried to execute something like that in Modeler. And yeah. I'm, we can get back to that later on. Um, okay, cool. And this is some some statue style work, just to show off something a little bit more uh, detail heavy or surface oriented, um, something a bit more complex than the smaller scale miniature work. <clears throat> and this was the uh, hero image done for a medium, which I was fortunate enough to be able to do with your team. Oh, back in the day. I always forget that you did that one. That's cool. That's I so really cool. Like that. And I also think that you know, it's another good example of of um, these kinds of softwares being so not technically focused that it really lends itself to um, to just getting briefed on a style and just executing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and not being sort of dictated uh, your final look based upon the software you're using. Right. Um, and this is um, some of the... Um, I just wanted to show a quick few examples of uh, the yeah. recent game you worked on, or, or one of the recent games I worked on, where we did these... Um, like we did, we did hundred plus uh, concepts directly in VR and uh, had the assets okay. sent to to, uh, to approval directly from from um, uh, uh, VR at the bar for some some rendering. But it was it was something I really wanted to do after initially seeing uh, VR creation because it's it's such a direct way of working and instead of showing fronts and backs as illustrations, you have the the ability to show your client the entire asset and, and once it moves further down the pipeline there are so many fewer um, situations where guesswork sort of impacts the pipeline because you have full approved asset already there it just basically needs optimization and, and, and proper recreation but yeah, that was um, for this and, and uh, numerous other projects it was it showed to be a Proved to be a, a quite powerful uh, new way of, of working with it. Right, and you'll be showing us some of these sculpts uh, in your scene later on, right? Yeah, I think I have this guy in scene that we can we can see how how uh, directly it, um, it came from that, and also the environment I showed earlier is on, also in the scene. So so you can see that it's very much a case of me doing as much as possible directly in VR because it's sort of safeguards me that the pain of, of uh, dealing with iterations, of which there are many in uh, my kind of work. Yeah. And this is another example where we did a full game pre-visualization in VR. So everything you see here, except for 2D line work, is, is um, concepted directly in VR. And mm -hmm. the assets, since they are 3D and fully approved already, they can be reused in a number of ways, repost easily and stuff like that. 
and also used for marketing. So, but um, yeah, maybe that's enough talking, and we should. <laughs> We love to see you. Yeah. It's really cool to see, yeah. So, um, yeah, what do you say we just jump into it? Yeah, let's hop in. Let's do it. This is where Tyus puts on his costume, where it's actually, um, he's going to be a guy in VR. <laughs> now you're saying, now you're, uh, you're saying that I should should have put some sort of a sticker or mask no, on okay. that would have been a nice touch. No, no, no. I'm so excited to actually see the way in which Tyus works in VR too, because uh, we see your work all the time in community too, and he's got like dwarves and um, mostly dwarves, <laughs> but there's like so many iterations of them and they're all so beautifully done. So I'm really, uh, really interested yeah. to see how you're managing to be able to work so quickly, because that's also something that you talk about fairly frequently, right, Tyus? So is everything looking all right? Can yeah, you guys yeah. see? It looks great. Yeah. So this is fantastic. It's just a base mesh, but but it's just to, to start off with. Um, and you you guys are welcome to push me along if I spend too much time here. But I really wanted to just for people new to Modeler to start off with some some basic stuff on how I um, how I work on the basic stuff in in Modeler and how I use my my workflow is very primitive based. Like I. Um, Sort of, I don't use kit bashing much per se, but I use a lot of primitive stuff, just like I would sketch uh, stuff uh, with a pencil, very uh, focused on uh, primitive shapes first, mm -hmm. and and then um, how I s start building uh, stuff from there. So um, I'm using a base mesh here just to sort of get started quickly, but but in Modeler you can you can do a lot of uh, stuff and. Um, Basically, if I were to, to start doing some character work, I would just bring in a base mesh like this. Um, in some cases, I also just start from a sphere or something, but but um, if you're doing something more realistic, it's just a nice starting point. But I tend to um, start up with something that doesn't have any significant features, mm -hmm. sort of like a clean slate, if you will. Um, and then I would just go in and start splitting things off. And that's that's one of the things I really enjoy about it is that you don't have to, you know, start masking stuff and going into menus. You can just... Right, and that's the split tool that you're using, right? Yeah, right now I'm, I'm using the split tool. There, There's a... I mean, you could say there's a number of them, but compared to other apps, there it's, it's quite a limited tool set, but every tool is very powerful and can be used in many different ways. It's what I really enjoyed about model, uh, Medium back in the day and that um, carried over very much into Modeler. So it's mm -hmm. it's why I've, I, you know, I, I tend to, um, I always called it my 3D pencil because I, I work in 3D with Modeler uh, the same way I work in 2D with a pencil. Just very simple, doing simple stuff, but using it for a lot of different things. Right. Um, and so you, you mentioned that you work with pencil frequently. Um, I think the last time that we chatted, you actually came from a background in illustration, hey? Yeah, that's right. So originally, I'm, I'm, um, I'm from a school of uh, graphic design, and I worked in, in um, graphic design for corporate, corporate branding and advertisement oh, okay. uh, for wow. 12 years. So that back then, I was solely using Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, and those kinds of tools, um, working on logos and packaging designs and stuff like that, um, product branding primarily, product development, stuff like that. Um, That's very cool. So trying to um, get into uh, more um, illustrative work, I never really enjoyed painting that much. Um, so I really wanted to, I like designing with the pencil, I like drawing ideas, but rendering with, with paint was never really something I enjoyed a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I got deep into it because I had to, but I just really never found the love for it. So once I decided to try and, and um, switch careers and go into entertainment design, I knew from from the beginning that I would need and I would have to get into 3D since that was how I wanted to go about visualizing stuff um, 
with pencil yeah. sketching and final rendering in 3D. And, and most of the apps, I, I, I attack them from the way that I'm attacking Modeler. And that just really didn't work that well with most other 3D apps. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah. So, but the big thing for me was seeing some of the early artist live streams uh, that the team did with the medium back in the day, because there you could directly see how you could do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here, just moving stuff around with your hands and and interacting, or creating stuff in a very direct way without having to have that engineer's approach where you need to travel through a lot of menus and mm -hmm. having to know like spe specific features to get stuff done. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I got heavy into a uh, medium after that, and, and that actually helped me um, transition quite fast uh, into entertainment design. Oh, cool. Because I could just focus on learning inter uh, entertainment design instead of focusing on learning a, a lot of technical uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, both medium and modeler are designed to basically be a Photoshop in 3D. That's kind yeah. of the mental model. And so, yeah. I mean, obviously it's not exact and not everything sort of translates and there's unique tools that make sense for 3D, but we definitely try to approach it from that mindset of like a brush and a pencil and tactile creativity rather than sort of more um, exact assembly or, I mean, that those tools exist as well, but the, the mental model doesn't come from like moving individual pieces of clay. It's more holistic and lets you work big and small at the same time. Mm. Yeah, but it's also that that um, not ha interacting with uh, these things with your hands, it lets you like feel what's right for for what you're doing. Like this yeah. is a very simple <clears throat> case, but but just looking at what what his um, what his spine should be doing from all kinds of angles, you mm -hmm. you don't need to you know scroll through a lot of views and and you know go about it in a very robotic way. You can just continuously uh, rotate around your subject, rotate it in your hand and see it from a lot of, from, from so many angles in such a short amount of time that you just sort of feel what you want to do with it mm -hmm. instead right. of having to plan ahead. Um, and at any point you, I mean, right now I'm, I'm just using um, chopped up parts, but you can, you can start once you have a pose you like, you can start to to move stuff around with your hands as well. Oh, that's cool. And Where do you know to um, make the cuts, if you don't mind me asking? Because we see that you start with a T pose. Do you always start with the same model? Uh, like, what are what are your thoughts when you're actually making those cuts? Are you just making them um, in an anatomically correct way, or is there like any instance in which you would really push something or cut something in half? Yeah, I would say it it, it depends about uh, a lot upon the uh, the task. So, if I have a very specific brief, something if I'm working for uh, for a client on a project, I would have a specific brief. Sometimes they would provide a, a model and then I would bring it in like like this guy and just start chopping it up and, and doing whatever I need to do on top of that but um, other times I would use something like this where it's it, it just it has uh, like the um, the right proportions but I don't want it to have any features I don't want him to have any muscle work I don't want because it's just should be a clean slate for me to design uh, on top of uh, at other times I would create something entirely from scratch especially um, yeah it really depends because you I was just about to say especially if it's a, a stylized uh, character or a, um, prop or environment but but then again you could just as easily go from this guy into something more stylized so mm -hmm. Um, and you can you can do that very easily by let's for example take take this guy and just let's say I want to design start designing on top of him but right now he's just a, a collection of disassembled pieces. Mm -hmm. But one of the really nice things about Muller is you're never you you'll never experience working yourself into a dead end. So at any point in time. You're free to ha take something that was put out of symmetry and just just quickly um, put it back into symmetry. And for stuff like this, I don't really, if I have to be precise, I can, I can do that. But right now I'm just 
I'm just sketching in 3D, so I don't care about being super precise um, because now that it's back in symmetry, I can just quickly move it directly into the position where my original sketch was, delete that and put this new guy in and start manipulating him, uh. doing whatever I want to. Um, so let's say I would, um, this is going to be a rough version of it, but let's say I wanted to start stylizing him. I could just um, chop off uh, his chin, for example, and mm -hmm. now that's a separate piece. And now I can just start, you know, giving him like a very stylized, exaggerated chiseled uh, chin and, you know, that's very cool. yeah. keep going like that. And he could have a, a different kind of forehead and maybe go back in, chop that part off and start creating a, a different, um, Oh yeah. So really it's like an so intuitive it's process of how you play right. with it. Yeah. Hmm. So the, it's one of the things where you can, you can sort of re, uh, change whatever form you have into something new and right. the, it, it lends itself to a lot of playful iteration and trying th things out. Um, so moving on over here, I have yeah. kind of the same thing going on and this is where <clears throat> You could, um, one of the things I, I do frequently is I, um, I work with uh, a lot of uh, layers with just basic print, uh, primitives. I don't, I don't tend to uh, use the kit -bat set, redesigned kit -bat set, uh, a lot um, mm -hmm. because the way I work and the, the, the jobs I work on, it's no matter if it's for a client or for myself, I have like a specific visual design or world that I want to stay true to. So right. I don't really like at some, t sometimes I would, but, but most of the time I want uh, to design my own stuff and reuse that. So, so I'm in control of, of how it looks and you don't bring in something that has a completely different uh, language to forms and, and so on. So it, mm -hmm. because that would sort of look alien in a way. Okay. Yeah. Sense. But this is like um, a point where <clears throat> you could go about it, depending on what you're trying to achieve, you could work completely uh, off symmetry from the beginning, mm -hmm. or you can use some of the features like uh, mirrored instancing um, to be able to, to work freely, but still have the power of, of automatic symmetry and stuff like that. Um, oh, cool. And that's where I would start bringing in uh, primitives. So if I were to, um, to start working on the face, I could bring in a, um, a box like this to work on the brow. Right. And you can quickly duplicate forms and layers that you've already put down. So if you wanted to put um, a form like the fat you have under the brow there, just do that and... Um, that's very cool. Whenever I and watch so uh, videos from Tyus, it's like the one person I have to slow down the camera every time. We like, <laughs> like, like double take because he works so fast. It's it's kind of insane. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think the, the the speed in itself is not the point. It's more that you you only it's it's a result of me not fighting the software. I think, and that's that's what re what really um, makes me love the this sort of workflow so much is that mm -hmm. at, at, yeah, you know, at, at every at any time I feel that the limit of what I'm doing is just my la my lack of knowledge of a particular subject or yeah. something I could have designed better or something yeah. that I will take note of personally I, I have to I have to increase my knowledge in some point but it's not really a matter of I want. I have this image in my head of something I want to do, but I just don't know how to create that form. That's not yeah. really ever a factor. I think it's interesting because for for two D software, like most three D software, since it was designed around the mouth, the, like the mouse and keyboard, um, it it's interesting that it puts you puts the design of the software down a specific path because you're moving a two D thing on a three D 
well, on a 3D viewport, you're moving like 2D things. And so every operation that's, that's about movement, whether it's camera or shape movement, um, makes you operate a gizmo. It usually takes several actions to sort of move something in full 3D. And it's hard to underestimate, like, it's, it's, I guess it's easy to underestimate that VR doesn't just make it faster. It just, it's so intuitive that it puts all of that into the back of your mind. So then you're just focusing on the form. Whereas in the, no matter, I think, how good you get with desktop, it's still more in your foreground of, of, of thinking when you're right. doing stuff with desktop. And I think that in general propagates through like tool design, I including modeler, you know, when it runs on desktop, there's more specific and um, piece by piece adjustments that you do in modeler. If you're running it on desktop mode, it just ha happens to be the nature of the interface. But mm -hmm. what it sort of means is um, it, it's easier to paint yourself into a corner. Like if you watch a traditional 3D tool tutorial, it's like, here's the 10 steps. And you're like, you go here, you, you do this, and then you get this drop down. And if you sort of go off the rails at any one point, you're sort of stuck in this weird no man's land. Whereas I think the design and model or everything is basic shapes, lots of copying, lots of replication. There's not a lot of steps, like as Tyus was saying, there's not sort of the approach isn't to have lots of different tools for lots of different cases. Mm -hmm. It's more instead to have very few tools and combine them uh, in a way to achieve a specific goal. And that's like very intentional um, design because what that means is that at any point you can kind of step off that path and change gears. Um, so if you're in the middle of making an ear or something, you don't have to like go through all the 10 steps. You're mostly just repeating the same steps over and over. And when you're done, you can just switch to a different part and kind of churn on that. Um, so you're not changing your mental state of the interface very much. You're not sort of going from like subdivision to polygons to Booleans. It's like, it's kind of all the same thing, just kind of churning on, on and on and on. Um, I think that contributes to that, not just the speed. I mean, uh, like the, the speed is part of it, like you said, but like just just that tactile feel and getting lost in the in the moment of it rather than having to pop out and be like, okay, how do I do that again? Okay, now I'm back in there. Okay, how do I do that? Okay, it's like you're just doing the same thing over and over. Right. So I don't know. I think, I, I think for some people that's eff that that's effortless, but I think those are fewer than at least that's that's my idea that. Or, or maybe I should say just personally, for me, that sort of resets me every time I make that shift. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can stay out of switching apps and, and, and switching modes and stuff like that, and just stay in this stage right here, I can get so much done in so little time. And, and, um, and also just zooming around like this, it gives me like, it's, it's not really like a perceptible way. It's just that, mm. I found find that that because I have everything in my hand and I'm constantly, even though I'm not conscious about it, I see the form from a lot of angles all the time. Mm -hmm. That also translates into me not being surprised when I exit the software and export and go into a rendering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in in um, other workflows, I experience like ah oh, man that the the proportions are off and it it just looks like what I intended went yeah. through some kind of filter and it came out wrong on the other end where here I get the, the um, feeling that what I what I think I'm doing in here yeah. is exactly what I get in the rendering when I'm done. And that's I think that's actually I, an important thing. Also, also a different thing is that there are so many of the techniques I used I use in 2D with my pencil that translates directly in here. So for example, when I'm doing a block out like this, I could easily, and most of the time, I will do automate, automatic stuff like this. So if I adjust the cheeks here, it will adjust on the other side. But it could, for me, it can be equally um, powerful to just ignore that altogether and mm -hmm. just do like this. And now I'm only focusing on mm. one thing at a time. So I don't, I don't see the effect on the other side. And that mm -hmm. helps me like, if I design something, maybe I uh, in, on a pencil, I would I would naturally just have it from one angle. At that that uh, allows me to focus on things like mm -hmm. what are these forms doing uh, compared to the forms further down the face in a profile kind of way. Right. So it 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 allows me to whenever I have something that I feel isn't quite there yet, it ha it gives me so many different ways of solving that problem and, and moving on fast instead of getting stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah. 
you're really selective about your process then too, hey? Yeah, because it, I mean, as as much as I can uh, keep it fast and, and non -pro -pro problematic and not have it get in the way and keep it like a sense of being gamified, the, mm -hmm. the more I can go into whatever um, adjustment or iteration that is requested with like, uh, like I said before, this upbeat state of mind of like, yeah, let's yeah. explore it because it's it's not a hassle. It's it's exciting to try it out yeah. instead of ha having the sense like you want to throw your computer out the window because, oh man, it's uh, iteration number yeah. 15 and I don't want to do this anymore, you know? it's. Yeah. I think that's kind of the key. It's like you we, we're, we're banking on it being, <clears throat> being enjoyable enough that you do more operations. And I think on paper, when people first see this uh, workflow, they think, oh, well, you know, in, in, in my favorite DCC tool, like I could use such and such modifier or such and such filter or such and such operation. And there's like lots of bespoke things that could legitimately make some of these things faster, like whether it's uh, deforming things in, in a specific way or selecting multiple things and doing some kind of like re-smoothing or whatever. There's lots of techniques you can do. Um, but I think the, the bet here is that knowing those techniques for one takes up like valuable space in your brain and then also it takes you out of that flow to remember to do those techniques so even though it's slower to do things potentially more than once you're doing the same thing and it's and it's pleasant in the same way painting or drawing with a pencil is pleasant like obviously there are some things we have here like symmetry and instancing so it's not like we're sort of luddite style people were like no there's no undo on a pencil so we will not have undo it's like no, we want to take some of those things, but not go full hog into like, okay, you've got like, what's the fastest way to get to a result? Okay, let's add a feature for that. That's not right. usually the goal. It's like the goal is what's the minimum set of features to accompany the or accomplish the most amount of things. And, you know, if there is something that we need to add to speed up a piece, it has to be like a 10x gain. Like it has to be mm -hmm. vastly faster uh, to do it rather than doing it by hand. So we really try to encourage the handmade aspect of it. Yeah, and uh, one of the nice thing while we're going through the basic stuff is like once once I've uh, started, let's say I've I've done what I've done with the face and maybe a few more steps than that. And I've done uh, that uh, to uh, most of the um, about it, I, at least to a place where I'm starting if, to feel like a sense of direction. Then instead of having uh, static typos, I, like I did here, I went into um, the arms and uh, made a link. And then now I can copy it over and mirror it. And now I can have a post character that's not symmetric, but it will still respond to me jumping in there and starting to elaborate the character, giving him muscles or clothing pieces, something like that. I could duplicate the, the layer already and pull it out to create like a sleeve or something. And it will repeat on the other side. <clears throat> um, so you can you can have your, your design, like if you were going to present the character, you could do something a little less stiff than a T-pose but you can still have a fully um, automated layer set underneath it. Sort of like if you think of it like 3D smart objects, if you're coming from Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the ways that it's also helping me a lot because you could also just duplicate the entire character and have it s have a copy, just group it make a link, put it over here um, and have right now they're directly linked, but I could have a T post version of the design over here and have right. the uh, asymmetrical post version and they would share design parts. So if I go into this character and change uh, the sleeve, it will um, affect the other one as well. So, oh, cool. so if we're working on the very initial stages of a character design, I can, I can sort of have have the presentation ready already and just focus on the actual design of the character. That's the yeah, power of technique. instancing. Yeah, and of course, this is looking super crude, but again, we're just going through the basics right here. 
Yeah, I've and seen just some people like arrange these things around them for inspiration. So you have like your main one you're working on, and then all the different poses around. So you can just glance. It's kind of nice to be ambiently surrounded with the different versions and see how it all changes. Yeah. yeah. And th I just this is pr pretty much heads up sorry. for everyone. Uh, sorry, Tyus, we are uh, forty minutes in, just so that you're aware. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we should we should skip. No, okay, just bit. just carry on. <laughs> or maybe we could just do a full hour stream. That's fine with me as well. Yeah, full hour is good. We're scheduled for a full hour, so have fun <laughs> no, with that. Well, I think everyone's really excited to like see what you're actually doing here. We have some uh, comments that says. Uh, some cheeky, cheeky bone work, lovely stuff. Um, that's from Martin McGee. Uh, Bruno wants to know how long it took you to get used to this new dis discipline. So I'd imagine that from like, what was your what was your time frame along like learning 3D and then moving into VR? Did you face any obstacles? Like, how was that process for you, Tyus? Yeah, I think um, my personal experience was I saw the uh, initial. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to talk a bit about Medium because that's where I started, yeah. but it's very similar in the workflow and it's just Modeler is just a more powerful version of it with more features and, and a bigger scope to it. Um, so I just saw the live stream. I contacted the, Glenn, one of the live streamers who, who were in the first ones, just asked him what, what sort of a rig do I need to, to get the most out of this VR sculpting approach. So I went and bought a PC and just dove into that. and. My first thing, since I was still in graphic design at the moment, uh, my first thing I did was um, product imagery. So I just, um, <clears throat> I needed to um, do a product image of a bottle uh, with a, a tin foil around it. So I just mm -hmm. went into medium and folded um, square pieces of clay around the bottle uh, and according to a reference image. Uh, so I was pretty much using it right away. And on the side of that, I was just doing a lot of personal tests, uh, taking imagery I wanted to do and figuring out how to, to do that. And we are, I think it's pe people should, should not overcomplicate it too much because that's the beauty of this sort of software is that it's, you, you don't need to know anything. You just go in, lay down a, a few layers of clay and take the move tool and start the warp tool here and, and start moving stuff around. And it's, I mean, within a few days you'll have You'll 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 have worked your way all around the the app because it's the tools are a few, uh, only few but they're very powerful each one of them and from there on it's just the limit of your knowledge uh, in terms of of what you want to create uh, your your visual library and your design knowledge and stuff like that like the tools are very simple. Yeah, we try to make it so that the tools are not what you focus on learning, like learning that the UI and the tools shouldn't take more than a day or two, especially, you know, because there's not a lot in there. Um, but most of it is in technique and in your knowledge of whatever subject you're doing. So if you're doing organics, then obviously you want to have good knowledge of anatomy and things like that. And then if you're doing hard surface stuff, then understanding construction and <clears throat> how things are made and all that. So it's really quite... Um, tactile and, and, and literal, we try to make it very direct. So for example, when you do like buildings or mechanical things, we, we support just like a stupidly large number of layers so that if you want to make a house like brick by brick, you can just do that. If you want to make a character muscle by muscle, you can do that. So the kind of the straightforward approach should just translate. Just imagine how you would do it in real life out of clay. And that should generally work out. And I think that's really nice compared to I think um, what most people have seen coming into 3D, which is like, oh, how do I make a house? It's like, oh, well, you know, make this quad, add tessellations, like all these arcane techniques. Um, so people are used to thinking 3D requires a lot of learning um, of that sort. Whereas here it's like, well, you learn how to make a box and then you just copy the box until you're happy with the box amounts. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so I, I think there's a... Um, a real difference between techniques that are just about the art and techniques that are more about how do you use the UI to accomplish those. And we, we try to minimize the UI related things whenever we can. Right, and so I'm looking so, at you build this, Tyus. Um, I remember you were showing me something about the bracelet earlier and you were saying that there's an ability to duplicate um, objects and make iterations on those designs. What does that look like? 
Yeah, and that's that really just comes down to me re reusing hierarchies that I've already built in. So for the sword, for example, I have this sort of uh, four axis mirroring thing. So w once again, let's say we want a different design for the sword. I can just I can just start messing around with it and really create the f whatever form I need. And, mm -hmm. and the hierarchy is already there. Let's say I want to make the handle uh, a little bit uh, longer. I will just, I'll just um, do it like this. Oh yeah, so it's, that was it's, quick. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's not the most beautiful sword, but I hope it, uh, the point comes across that, that you can, it's, it's again, it's, it's that freedom to do whatever you want and not having to fight the app over it. Uh, this is the bracelet, for example, if, if we had a character, just let me know, guys, because I'm, I'm, I have still a few things I would like to show you. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit scared of running out of time, but yeah. let's say I have a, a, a designed object like this. <clears throat> Once again, um, I can create it as a linked asset. And, and let's say this was a very um, complete character with a lot of um, right. costume on it. Maybe I would want to redesign or reevaluate the forms on, on this particular piece. I can just move it away into a nice quiet area of, of um, my skull and use the hierarchies that are already there. So if I want to, this part to be something, something different, I can just go and do that. And it's, it, it's, it allows for um, very easy, playful exploration, uh, really. Um, so you could really easily just just adjust things and just gives me a very nice sense of not really, nothing is precious in here because at any point, that's one of the things I really miss um, whenever I'm not in, in, uh, in Modeler is I feel trapped like if you have like a, a traditional workflow where, where once you get from step one to three, four or five, and you're at the end of your asset creation, mm -hmm. it's, it can be quite a headache to then be told to do a fundamental change to your design because you have to go pretty much back to scratch. And, and I, it, it makes me sort of scared of, of um, changing things when, when I approach uh, the end of an asset or a, a particular piece. And I don't have that here because everything is just, it's just not a worry. You, you can right. do whatever you want. And now you have a different uh, form to the bracelet you started out with. Yeah. I think so, so you started out in like CAD and engineering. And so the, the approach just sort of like sunk in this idea that your mesh has to be perfect. Everything has to look good. Everything has to be perfectly connected, They're blah, blah, blah. So like, we want to just get rid of all that and be like, no, just throw clay at it, you know, jank the <laughs> mesh up, we'll fix it for you. And I think that's very freeing and, and unique in 3D. Like, I think that puts a lot of people off 3D and want yeah. to get the people in there. It's interesting, even reading the chat comments right now, there's a lot of people asking, like, how do we retopo? And like, how many layers can you have? And I think that's just an ingrained uh, kind of PTSD yep. from having just worked in like 3D software prior to. So um, yeah, for everyone, everyone who's watching this presentation too, Tyus uh, can attest to this, where he's got all of these models together in the same scene. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, in response to how many layers, it's like, uh, this was the statue that was in my one of my initial uh, <laughs> renders in the beginning of the scene. And everything here is still layered um, and directly editable. So I could go in and change that. Um, I have one of the game characters here. Uh, I can still go in and edit everything. And we're still in the document we started with. And down here, I have a full environment of, of, the, <laughs> of, it, of the test scene I did after being inspired by, um, by the Dark Tide demo. Yeah. And so, so this is directly what you saw rendered in 3D and everything here is is layered and at a, uh, possible uh, to go in and change. Everything is on its own layer. So the response to that is you can have quite a few layers. <laughs> it almost feels unreal. Like I feel anxious looking at it in a way, but I, I know like, that oh my God, you got the scene in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. You have individual rivets on the floor plating as well. So 
Um, so you can you can do whatever you want. This is a photo uh, photo scan uh, person for human scale reference when when laying down the, the the shapes of everything. Stairs are linked. Like everything, you can change it with with a, with a heartbeat, and everything here is, is still in the same scene. So that's really, I think that sums up one sort of task in here because I can just take a full statue and just duplicate it. I could make a copy. <laughs> yeah, it's and and I could give him four arms in a, in a second um, if if I was inclined to do so. So yeah. If you have, if, if you guys have any specific things, I would, I would, uh, I, I can oh, dive into have, that. But oh, sorry, we do have a question that says, um, if the is the is the system's GPU memory um, more important for a modeler if they're building a PC? And I think that the answer to that would be yes. Correct, Anton? Yeah, it, the more GPU memory you can get, the better. Just in overall, um, at at a high level, the the kind of the. The, the, the detail of your sculpts will basically be limited by your GPU memory. Mm -hmm. The amount of instances, though, isn't. So that's, you know, whenever you instance something or just copy it, we, you don't pay memory for it if it's not changed. So you can actually copy stuff pretty liberally. Um, like Joshua, for example, has actually made castles out of bricks. And so there'll be like just a couple of layers three or four layers, but he'll have like 50,000 copies of it or something ridiculous. <laughs> and it'll be like, I think the last scene he made was 8 billion polygons. <laughs> so it's, <Holy>. like, <laughs> it's kind of insane. So you don't need a lot of memory to, to throw a lot of polygons on the screen. But if you want to make something very detailed and very unique, something like an organic sculpture of a face or like a character with lots of detail, then uh, having more VRAM is helpful. Um, and then obviously having powerful processor helps the sculpting speed. Um, so. Everything helps, but yeah, if you if you're worried about limits, then GPU memory is probably the first one people hit. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and Tyus, we have uh, ten minutes left, so show us the rest of what you uh, would like to go through. Yeah, but I don't know really. Um, yeah, I, I I would really like like to know if uh, if if there's something that you guys, either you you two or the audience, think I missed uh, explaining because I think one of the, the points um, that are very um, important to me is that no matter if you're using, um, if your end goal is doing, a, sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy, <laughs> if you, no matter if your end goal is, is creating environment art or something huge in scale or if you're just looking to create a small gun prop or realistic stuff or stylized it all comes down to what we started with um oh almost got lost in my own scene here so it all all for me at least it all comes down to the form um and the flexibility to manipulate that to anything you need um, and the freedom to do it just on a whim, really. So, mm -hmm. um, because there's a workflow that you have in which you go from like clean to dirty and then dirty to clean again, right? Yeah. So, um, so for example, if, if you were on a, on a, in my mind, sort of a clean workflow, let's say that you wanted to take this guy and maybe not have, have him be so steroid induced, you can just take this full group of layers and just just shrink him down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and but, but you, in, in terms of going clean to dirty or dirty to clean, you could also just take what you already have. Um, sorry, I'm jumping through stuff. Yeah, here. Okay. So let's let's take um, this arm, for example, you could just as well go into this and um, just basically destroy the geometry you have. Just down res, um, merge it all together. And just use it to come up with something different, like, I don't know. Um, just, just mess it up. Um, 
Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm getting And so this is roster. what you mean by unlimited things, creative freedom, so, right? Yeah, so one of the things, uh, it's because I'm, I'm like most other people, I tend to get locked into a, a usual way of working. But what I mean is, instead of, I'm, I'm starting from primitives a lot of the time because I'm very obsessed about the first blocking stage that you see here. Like the interaction of the collar bone interaction with the, mu the muscle on the top of the pec and the main part of the pec, for example, and the, the how much space they take up in relation to each other. Um, but you could just as well go in and just sketch out your arm in something blobby like this and start okay. creating your character from that. And then yeah. at any point, you can just go back into that and and start um, being more precise, cutting it out, upping the resolution again, and then go from what is essentially um, uh, something I would uh, do in, uh, in a marker on a pen, something very loose, and then go into pencils and be more more and more precise. So you can do whatever. You can take the, the approach in any sort of way you want whatever mm -hmm. sort of works with the way you think. Yeah, and the thing I like is that because it's so basic in the same way using pencil techniques is, is sort of basic, like not simple, but like basic in the sense that it's the most fundamental piece. Once you learn how to shape forms, you can use that same, um, those same skills to shape like rocks or trees or a mountain or a piece of iron. So it's like you don't necessarily learn specific I mean, there's things that are more more common in organics or things that are more common in architecture or hard surface, but the the movements and the um, the ability to shape form how you wish translates very well. And that's another thing that makes Modeler, uh, I think, quite fast to pick up because you're not necessarily learning specific skills for each individual thing. Like in Tyus' scene, he's got you know weapons and props, and he's got the whole architectural scene, and he's got organics, but they're all using basically the same underlying um, movements and techniques. And so once you can do one of those, you, you, it's much faster to jump to another thing. You don't need to learn a whole separate tool tree and separate menus and separate techniques. Right. And it's kind of cool seeing um, Tyus coming from a medium background too, because I know that uh, a lot of users who do come from medium um, are used to like putting clay down in like very shaving cream kind of like, oh, I want this clay here, I'm just gonna plop it down and make it. Um, as opposed to Modeler really focuses on being able to kind of bounce back and forth between the two where you have uh, pushing of your perms around um, and being able to handle multiple levels of instancing so you can actually get those forms um, as well as being able to kind of just block uh, like wet clay, as you will, wherever you would like yeah. to see it. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we're, the medium still has lots of great stuff in it, and we're we're still um, wanting to bring some of the features over. Um, we chat often with Tyus and other members of the community about what would make sense to to bring in, and um, uh, yeah, it's a balance of trying to combine that with with Modeler's new scene graph um, and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah definitely OG medium, much respect. Mucho respect. Uh, <laughs> Community is already screaming reference images. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah, that, we need that. That's definitely on the it's list. It's coming. It's coming. Um, yeah, and so this is our last uh, three minutes that we have with Taya. So uh, if the community has anything that they want to ask, uh, feel free to toss it into the chat. We also do have our community um, Discord that we do frequently um, ask questions, answer, and share different things as well as have like different sculpt together sessions. Is there anything uh, else that you wanted to end with uh, in terms of what creative freedom is to you and Modeler, uh, Tyus, or any last words in that regard? Well, I think I think we've uh, covered a lot of it already, but um, just in in um, sort of elaborating what what one of the f uh, final points were that for me. Uh, personally, um, one of the big differences it's, it's made is that <clears throat> since I have direct control over the forms with my hands, <clears throat> um, it allows me to, to, to jump across not just different styles like I talked about in the beginning, but also different disciplines. So um, in the past, for example, 
um, working on an environment like this would demand uh, different software and different techniques, uh, different approaches um, compared to if I wanted to create a statue like this or uh, do like um, uh, what what would essentially be a creature design or costume costume design or whatever. And that's that's a, another thing where I think it it it's it gives me a lot of power is that. Once you know the basic tools, it basically allows you to create anything. Like it, the, 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 the app doesn't lend itself specifically to one thing. And, and as much as I love uh, Medium, because it was my first experience of having this freedom, um, and, and in spite of me experiencing some, some uh, you know, alien feeling moving from Medium to Modeler, it's once I had a few weeks in and started to get the mu muscle memory, in, I got that back just tenfold because now the scope is so much bigger that I, I could, you know, you, I could just as easily do a town square with the same few simple tools that I would use to create a, 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 a Lego lo uh, looking uh, sword like this. And yeah. I think that's, for me, that's, that's what what's most important, um, the, um, the freedom and the precision um, that it offers me. Like, whatever task I'm going to attack it, I, I, I can do so without any fear of would I be able to pull it off. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't think I can put it in words much more accurate than that. <laughs> I think one thing, awesome? one cool thing artistically is that uh, it also lets you mix those things like in, in one of your sculpts like the one uh, i don't know what that name is but the soul reaver looking dude and, and he, he's got uh basically like a fence a little bit of architecture obviously props organics Ooh. monsters uh so even if you're not necessarily making separate things it's really cool that you're able to beef up any sculpture with bits of that seamlessly you know without having to be like oh i need to make this pedestal i gotta jump into a different app it's like so i think putting it under your fingertips makes uh any model have small bits of that easy to inject and if it's easy to inject you're more likely to do it so it's just like i think bigs up the work yeah, yeah. okay well that's really cool thank you so much tyus uh, for coming on and showing us your creative workflow we'd love to have you back uh if you would like to come on in the future Absolutely, it's it's my pleasure. Like, it's just I I feel such such creative joy in the in software, and it's it's it just I I wouldn't say that I mean work meeting other people and and, and people who are very into their workflows. I I don't have a need to sort of convince them. I just but I really want to show people, you know, that. They don't have to be experts in 3D to um, to use 3D to visualize what they have in their head and, and explore all those options that are there. And I think that's pretty unique to the to the VR sculpting app, like uh, like Modeler. So cool. the more I can sort of show that and and and, and share that that sort of sense of freedom and joy that I get from it. Uh, yeah, the better. So always happy to jump on. Excellent. The more people join in, the more techniques we get. So since it's not about the UI, it's about the techniques we all. Yeah, there's benefit. so many ways oh, yeah. to those tools, right? So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the artist that makes the tools, not the other way around, which I think is always really cool. And thank you too, as well, um, Anton, for coming on and giving us some insight into uh, like how uh, you view the the actual tool itself. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Alrighty. All right. uh, Thanks Take for joining, everybody. Take care.